things I wanted to talk about now, more about Spider-Man Homecoming, was kind of the reactions and some of the reviews that I've heard and some of the things that have happened with Spider-Man Homecoming into its second week in the box office. Mm-hmm. First, it had a 73% drop in box office. A lot of people were like, oh my god, that means Marvel's falling apart, or the, the or it was a really shitty Spider-Man. And I don't really think that is. I think it's competition. Yeah. You had Planet of the Apes come out, and then next week we're going to have Dur- Dunk, whatever that is, Dirk Hunk. Dirk Hunk? Dunkirk? Dunkirk, yeah. I'm not German. I like Dirk Hunk better. First I was like, Dirk Hunk? Oh, man. Dirk? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, there's competition. It's also summertime. Yeah, you know, so that I always wondered uh, how summertime releases. Yeah, the uh, kids are out of school. Yeah, the, sorry, I didn't finish my thought there. <laughs> how summertime releases? Uh, yeah, how how summertime releases are affected by kids being out of school? Because yeah, you have kids out of school. There's more possibility that the parents will take them during the week. So you know, you have that a little bit. But you also have people who it was right around Fourth of July. And, you know, people are going on camping trips or going on vacations. And a lot of times they're not going to go see a movie. So there's actually a couple movies that I was going to take my kids to see. Cars 3 was one of them. Despicable Me uh, was another one. Fuck, I forgot all those were. Yeah. And so, yeah, they just like pass, you know, time passes and you're like, oh, shit, I completely forgot about that. And and a lot of it is because of summertime. And, you know, that was winding towards the end of the school year for here. So. Well, uh, originally we were going to actually review Planet of the Apes, whatever it is, we were, War, yeah. War of the Apes or whatever. Right. We were going to do it, but it just, time-wise, it just wasn't going to line up. And Shane hasn't seen the, the prior two. Mm-hmm. So just the timing and how busy the weekend, or, and well, how busy the week in general could be yeah. during the summer, just it wasn't going to happen. And so, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, so I, I don't think it's like the sky is falling, oh my gosh, 73% drop. You know, right. it, and it, it's the same thing when you, you know, we, we go to a DC movie and we're like defending it. Well, now we're defending fucking Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think it's, and plus it's had good reviews. Yeah. And from what I've seen on social media, like people love this movie. Yeah. I think a little too much and a little blind on this, but there was like, I saw one of the major pages have like, out of one through 10, and what do you think Spider Man Homecoming was? And everybody's like, 12, 9,000, right. 10,000, <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, yeah. And like, I only saw some legit ones of like 7s, 8s, and yeah. like 6s in that ballpark area. A couple 5s. Some people are saying this movie's terrible, and I, it's not terrible. No. It's far from it's, terrible. Yeah, definitely I was the general. one with the lowest score out of yeah. all of us in the previous I, one. I have really, Battle Bob got me like really thinking about my scoring system and- How shitty it is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I, maybe yeah, I well, should go first. <laughs> well, it just of kind of like, man, am I really that harsh, or is it is it that oh, hard to I to impress? Nice. <laughs> I thought well, you were too nice to move. <laughs> <laughs> really, a three point six is that's what I gave Spider Man Homecoming. I gave it a three point three. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought that was high. I, uh, honestly, uh, remember I was originally going to give it a three. Right. <laughs> right. So. Which is like almost middle of the road. Right. You know, and but for me, a lot of it I base on my scoring is based on my re- reaction when I'm leaving the movie. Right. You know, and it, it, to me, I can't give over a four if I didn't walk out of there like, holy shit. You know what I mean? And so it, it I immediately that's kind of how, OK, this is going to have to be a three because I'm like, nah, OK. And then, you know, when I elaborated and said my scores kind of evolve. It's because if I see this, I will see this one a second time, especially based on how many people are like, oh, I fucking love this. Well, I didn't see Dr. Strange a second time, so never mind. But I will see this one a second time. It, my score might evolve, you know, once I, I get more comfortable with kind of the the route that they're taking this, because that was one of my biggest hangups is I was just unsure of, of how many differences there were. But uh, but yeah, I, it was it was funny after our last review. I was like, man. Uh, am I really that harsh on movies at 3.6? Is that not fair? And then I was noticing the same thing. People are like, 10 out of 10. Like, yes, this is the best movie ever. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know how you could look at it and think it's the best movie ever. One, the trailers ruined it, as we mm-hmm. were talking about. I mean, Sony, Marvel, you know, they really put it out there that, you know, they put a lot of shit out there in the, the trailers. And, you know, running this show, we can't not watch trailers because that's some of our things. Is we yeah. talk about our reactions to these trailers mm-hmm. and so forth. I really thought they, I mean, I won't watch those little extended clips they put on YouTube and shit like that or on the internet. Right. Where it's like two minutes of the movie, mm-hmm. just uncut or, or whatever. You know? Yeah, I learned my lesson with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't watch those and I usually avoid a lot of them. But then mm-hmm. I started seeing that, yeah, when I was putting some stuff together, there's a lot. There's a lot of clips out there for Homecoming. And right. if you piece it together, 
again. You pretty much have the movie. You could pretty much watch the movie. Yeah. Man of Steel was like that. I I, I pretty much watched almost the entire movie. There were a couple of filling parts where I was like, well, damn, like, and, and as even before going into the movie, I still had a pretty good idea of how it laid out, you know, and it does not that it took away a, a lot for me, but it definitely, you're like, oh, there's a lot of. A lot of shit that's ruined, and then you know, Batman versus Superman with yeah. the whole Doomsday thing. <laughs> yeah, that was the, one of the biggest guess. kick on the balls. I think. Yeah, I think that trailer was those. Well, those trailers in general. Well, I guess it was really just the one. Yeah, it was the one Doomsday trailer. Just really laid out the movie. It did. Yeah, it really laid it Completely. out. And you're like looking at it. You're like, what the fuck? And if, I swear, if you cut that trailer off just before the music switches tone and it goes towards Lex Luthor on that trailer, right? That dun 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 dun. And like, if you cut it off there. Solid trailer. Yeah. You just got to cut off like that last 25 seconds. Yeah. It's and- it's so funny because I understand why studios do it. They want to get you pumped for it, which I'm I'm fully expecting Superman to be shown in this fucking Justice League trailer yep. at Comic-Con. It's almost, well, speculation is yeah. run rampant. It's, <laughs> I do like the fact that in like every trailer or picture, uh, someone like put a bunch of them together and they're like, what the fuck are you looking at? Because the Justice League and like almost everything is looking at something <laughs> off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It was it was pretty I'm awesome, but us, motherfuckers, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not Superman. I I get it because once I saw Doomsday, I was stoked for it. And but then once you watch the movie, you're like, man, that would have been a great you Reveal. know surprise. Yeah. yeah, and and so it's gonna be the same thing with Superman. And like we said with Spider Man Homecoming, there was a lot. Not that there was like, oh my gosh, this person's gonna be in it, but you got the general idea of the movie. And I feel like that ruins a lot of spontaneity. It's bleh spontaneity yeah no it does <laughs> that it, word it, it, <laughs> no it really does it really does i think i killed a lot of moments in homecoming yeah uh, there's one part that they didn't show the whole thing in the trailer and that's the car scene mm-hmm. which i still say to this day is probably one of the best moments in the mcu they yes. had is the car scene between vulture or you know michael keaton's character mm-hmm. and peter it, it's fantastic and it wasn't ruined by any humor and it was just it was amazing and i've actually seen people say yeah he was an okay villain you know and i was like okay no this is clearly right this is clearly <laughs> the best villain the mcu has produced in a long time yeah possibly since loki and loki wasn't even really that good he's just a uh entertaining villain to mm-hmm. have around because of what he does he does do mischief and stuff like that yeah and tom hiddleston plays a great character yes he does yeah. and so that's really the the only reason why i say that but other than that rest of the fucking villains are almost forgettable i mean well, uh, it, ronan it, from Galax- guardians of the galaxy was i thought close. was close i thought he was introduced very well yes. and i thought he was really solid the ending got to neuter him a little bit mm-hmm. And takes away some of that a thunder. <laughs> a little bit. It, it, I thought he was introduced well, but then his yeah, story, his, no, I agree with that. his reasons start falling apart a little bit at the end, and mm-hmm. then the dance off kind of kills it a little bit. Yeah. It, it, but yeah, and then I'm like, you think about it. What else? Who else is there? There is nobody else. I, it, I tried. I really tried comparing someone else to Vulture and saying, okay, where, you know, who else could could live up to that? And it's it's tough. It's it is really tough. You, there, if you go through every Iron Man, Captain America. You look at Guardians of the Galaxy. You, like you said, Ronan is is up there. And uh, you know what? Um, what's his name? Uh, I want I want to say Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> but fucking what's uh Obadiah Stane from the other uh, the, <laughs> the other O guy? Obadiah Stane was was okay, but not you know not not too memorable. The guy from the second Iron Man, Whiplash. Yeah, it, he was he was Mickey okay. Rourke. Yeah, Mickey Work did a, did a pretty good job, but not like you said, not too uh, too memorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this pretty is much. Not my book. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I think that that's where most of my excitement comes from. Is finally they're I I feel like they're finding their balance, and we're gonna get into something a little bit later in this episode. It, it has to do with the balance and not nerfing the villains and you know the ca- force yes, got them. you the balance of the force yes exactly <laughs> so we won right. uh spider-man homecoming uh if anyone was curious is still at 469 million dollars worldwide so total it's, flop it's all it's right do. <laughs> yeah. fucking a second week <laughs> right exactly God, i swear people just so, want to fucking make up shit as they go they it, do it, Which we're going to get into some clickbait as well. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> and one other thing I want to talk about, I really wanted to talk about it last time, but just again, time constraints, because we actually honestly tried to keep this an hour and a half, was that Sony is actually going to get the box office on this. Mm-hmm. And then Marvel slash Disney is going to get all the other revenue from like toys, shirts, clothes, all that other shit, all that other type of sales that go on. They get that. But Sony had to pay for the movie. Sony had to market the movie. 
but they get the box office. I'm I'm sitting here laughing because Disney is so fucking smart. Yeah, it's just genius. <laughs> and somebody really actually are. said on our Instagram that it was so stupid that Sony gets the box office. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Marvel gets at the toy sales. Right. They're going to make over a billion easy oh my gosh. in toy sales. And they had no risk. They, they didn't have to None. advertise the movie. They, they, they're just like, okay, we'll just produce the toys. And if you fucking go into any store, a Walmart, a Target, there's fucking toys everywhere. And it's all Spider-Man. And oh kids my gosh. are going to clamor to yes. a Spider-Man almost no matter what. Yeah. He's such. He's like the third, uh, like the third most uh, recognizable superhero. Yeah. Maybe even higher than that now. Yeah. I mean, it's like Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yep. You know, and, and kids are going to fucking swarm to that yeah. shit almost no matter what, whether your movie's shitty or not. Yeah. And and so Sony has to fight with Planet of the Apes and Dukirk and, <laughs> and, and, and a bunch of other box office things. Right. And what? They, what? They're going to get some Blu-ray sales? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it's just so smart for Disney. that They're negotiating. Uh, they are going to be like Amazon and just take over the fucking world. Those two are going to partner up and be like, yes, let's do it. Between <laughs> Disney, like Pixar. Right. And then you got Lucasfilms. And yep. Marvel Studios. If you really think about that, yeah, they own the world. Yeah, pretty much. They literally fucking own the world. <laughs> yes, and then it's, it's and, insane. And then so with their smart. now live action shit, Beauty and the Beast hit over a billion. Yeah, they're planning to destroy Aladdin and, <laughs> and Lion King with a live action version. But they're still gonna make a shit ton of money, <laughs> and they're gonna make it. a buttload of money. Because unfortunately, my dumbass will be there for Aladdin. I will not see Lion King though. That's, oh god, that's just gonna be stupid. I don't want to see Mufasa play up. You will. I will. I can't watch Mufasa. <laughs> not live action. Don't torture me again. Yeah, it's gonna be real. <laughs> Dad. Dad. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's it's insane. That's so smart. When I think you were the first, you were the person who first told me that, and I, I like my jaw drops because I was like, "Holy shit, that's so genius." They have no risk. They're just gonna collect all the money and be like, "Thank you." <laughs> like that. Thank that's you. It. Come again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. Oh, so fuck. one of the things that the biggest gripes that I have seen about Spider-Man Homecoming and everybody, all these nerds and everybody has just been having the biggest fucking rage boner over this was something that I did notice. But at the same time, I'm like, I thought maybe I just misunderstood when Avengers was in the timeline. I don't know. I just thought maybe they were trying to say that the Captain America, Iron Man and Thor movies all happened in a tighter group than they were distributed. Mm-hmm. And and then that's how it was going down. That's honestly how I thought it was going down. Yeah. So basically, the movie has where it show the book. The movie shows uh, Tombs. You know, the Vulture. You know, Michael Keaton's character. He's scavenging shit from the Avengers, right? Mm-hmm. And then the Department of whatever take your shit away from you. Um, <laughs> they actually have an official name and but Department of yeah, like, Debris or yeah, something. Yeah, it's Department of Take Your Shit Away From You. <laughs> yeah. Ruin your life and shit like that. Yeah. Turn you into a super villain. <laughs> yeah. They come in. <laughs> so they come in, they take the project away, and then it says eight years later, and mm-hmm. it shows Spider-Man as we know him now. This is after Civil War. Avengers happened in 2012. It was right. released anyway in 2012. So that would make this 2020 in the timeline. Right. If you go by that timeline. I was honestly always under the impression that Iron Man, uh, Thor, and the first Captain America movie all happened, and Iron Man 2, all happened in that this same little timeline within like a year or so. Right. That's what I always understood because that's when Dick Fury comes like, we're here for the Avengers initiative. And like what he told he told Tony that shit four years ago, right? When they actually did it, like <laughs> that. There's been that much time between all this shit, right? That's kind of where I was. Mm-hmm. That's where I was. I honestly thought like, oh, okay, it's a year later when yeah. all that shit well, happened. Well, 2009. I, yeah, I thought when um when they did the Agents of Shield TV show, which started roughly around, I want to say it was like 2012. I could be totally wrong on that. But I, I want to say that's kind of what they cover is that all of those, especially the first three movies or the, the not the first three movies, but uh, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor all happened like almost what's the word I'm looking for? Like at the same time. Yeah, basically that they, they were roughly right around the same within a few months of each other almost. And I, I could be wrong on that, but that's kind of how how I understood it as well. Um, one thing that kind of throws a random monkey wrench into this whole thing is the kid who is supposed to be Spider-Man and then he gets the mask or whatever from, from Iron Man. What what one is that? Iron Man. Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, yeah. However old he is and you fast forward, I want to say he's like 10 and you fast forward 8 years, it would put him at like 18. 
not a freshman in high school. So that kind of throws, you know, throws things for a loop also. I don't know why they, well, they the even kid, said that. How old is the kid in that? I feel like he's like 10. I would have thought he was a lot younger. Oh, okay. Well, ma maybe that's why. Maybe he actually is younger. I, I mean, mean, he looked like a tiny kid. Okay. I th I thought it was like 10, but maybe yeah, well, not. Well, you're better at a aging kids. I mean, if you Apparently technically... not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you make the kid seven, that lines up. Yes. So yes, that, exactly. that, that lines up. Whether or not they even want to care about that shit or not, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. I, I just think it confused fucking everyone even more. Because the, now they're like, okay, is it 2020 that this happened? Or who knows? But I've seen a, a valiant effort from everybody <laughs> on on the social media. To try to explain uh, this? Yeah, trying to explain it. Either how it works or how it doesn't work. And uh, the, one of the things I think that does confuse a lot of people is they are saying that all of these events happened when the movies were released. Right. And and I, I think that's that's what's throwing everyone off. And I can kind of understand that based on a lot of other things. But the people who are going into more detail and are uh, supporting, you know, I guess saying, no, the timeline isn't messed up, are going off of like what is verbally said in the movies. You know, this happened eight years ago, or I've been holding onto this ring or whatever for X amount of years or, you know, just different things like that. I guess Vision says something. Like when Iron Man first shows up, like just, oh yeah, in Civil War when Iron Man first shows up, uh, yeah, and and he said, I think he said eight years ago, or so that there's there's like a lot of examples that people have had that said no, this is exactly how it shows you where the timeline works out, and they it's exactly where where they said it should be. So I don't know, it's just confusing, and <laughs> I honestly don't know, not, I honestly don't remember who I heard this from. It was one of the a YouTube channel, but they were actually saying that. Doctor Strange might possibly be the reason for this fucking with the time. Right. With the time stone thing, with the affinity <laughs> gem that was just hanging from his neck the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck with the affinity stone. The affinity what? <laughs> <laughs> fucking dumbass movie. <laughs> anyway, so they were talking about he could possibly have fucked up the time, the timing and everything. So Yeah, that, uh, that makes they sense. They were using that as an excuse. Yeah, so who knows? All right, so now we're going to get into our best Spider-Man, and we're not going to cry about it when we tell it. Because <laughs> I wanted to talk about Tom Holland crying. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so we, we did we did a poll on our, our social media. I have no idea if Shane looked at the Facebook for this to see if we had any answers. Uh, well, we don't get much interaction on there. What so. about the Twitter? No one retweeted. People liked it, but they didn't retweet it or anything <laughs> or comment okay. or tweet at us. Yeah, so. All right. We're so, good. <laughs> so on our Instagram, <laughs> where we have a bulk of our followers yes, that exactly. don't really give a shit about what we ask. <laughs> Seriously. 13 fucking comments. Is it really that hard? <laughs> uh, it's probably everybody. Uh, we got a lot of likes on it. We got like 411 likes, but right. 13 comments. Yeah. So th 390. People, people like the picture, but that was about it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the same picture that's been rotating around everywhere. <laughs> It was a generic, <laughs> shitty-ass picture. I just made it easier for me. That's what all I was looking right, at. Yeah, exactly. Instead of loading three, I did one. <laughs> Should yeah. put our watermark on it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretended that we made it. <laughs> Coming straight from comic movie marks, the picture that's been around since, like, Civil War. I right. Think, maybe even more. <laughs> is oh, like right. comic movie marks. So we asked our adoring fans that don't give a shit about what we say <laughs> who they thought was the best Peter Parker and the best Spider-Man if it was one, or if you thought one did a better Peter Parker or did a better Spider-Man. Right. Our tally, our results are... <laughs> so, if, <laughs> on the best uh, Peter Parker, we got five for Andrew Garfield, four for Tom Holland, and three for Tobey Maguire. Wah, wah, wah. Which is stupid. We have so, the stupidest followers. Well, I was, I was shocked. I, I really made me laugh. He's because the worst Peter Parker by so far. I, the I, Japanese Super Sentai <laughs> version was a better Peter Parker. And I'm pretty sure we never saw him out of the costume. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but it, it made me laugh just based on how much... I, I like Andrew Garfield, but I, I can see yours. That was all you, huh? Yeah, yours and Nick's arguments. Yeah, me, all of my dis different Instagram pages. <laughs> Garfield uh, was the man. Okay, <laughs> What'd you say? I'm gonna I'm, cry about it now. I'm gonna prove it. Uh, and then the best Spider-Man, uh, we got five for Andrew Garfield and three for each Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire. Are you serious? So, but this is just in our, our small amounts. I will say that I, I have looked on other pages that have kind of done something similar. 
And there's a lot more, surprisingly, again, for Andrew Garfield than than I would think. I, I always feel like people go with what's most fresh in their mind. And, you know, people will say, oh, you know, whatever. It, well, I guess you can't really make that argument with Ben Affleck and Christian Bale. But uh, I, I do feel like a lot of people are would say, oh, Tom Holland, just because he's he was in Civil War and he was in, you know, now he has his own movie. And that's why people would say that. So I'm surprised to see how how many people are saying Andrew Garfield. And, and I did see a lot of people who said, even though the movie sucked, I liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man slash Peter Parker or one or the other. So I was I was shocked by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm floored. You people are fucking idiots. I don't care if you listen or not. Whoa, <laughs> our whole thirteen people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we got a couple more because we fudged some results too. <laughs> <laughs> from a different post, it's yeah. still accurate, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it came from us. Yeah, exactly. We're the originators. <laughs> Honestly, I think best. I don't know. Best Spider Man probably be Holland. Best Peter Parker probably be McGuire to me. I'd probably go with that. I liked Holland's uh, Spider-Man, even though I'm still really pissed about the spider sense. And now they're trying to backtrack saying, oh, well, he is going to have spider sense. He did have it, but it just didn't work the way it used to or something like that. It's the fucking suit. And, and have have you seen some of the stupid. stuff from, um, what is it, D23? Yes. Is that what it's called? They, uh, D23. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, Oh, I was thinking D23, Mighty Ducks. It's, they're They're still going, you know. D1, D2, D3, no? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I like turtles. So, uh, but they were saying that it, whatever was shown, that there's different, you know, different things that they're able to gather from from this this expo, and one of them is that Peter Parker will have Spidey sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess from whatever whatever's shown. I don't think a trailer has been shown, ha no. or has it? Well, oh. there was some kind of clips or something like that shown at D23. Okay. But they keep that shit tight, so you can't get fucking video. Right. Tight. And that they're they're trying to do that with Comic Con, but people are still fighting. I like it. I like how WB <laughs> just says, "Fuck it, we're just gonna show you everything anyway." Yeah, <laughs> they did. They did last year. Yeah. It, it didn't take long. Like a week later, they're like, "All right, fucking here's a trailer." So maybe before Comic Con, they'll release a trailer. So then everyone's like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> I paid all this money to go to Comic Con. <laughs> right. Yep. But <laughs> but they already paid for it, so they already have their money. And then yeah. you just show up to the panel. That's it. Yeah, stand in line for eight hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it now. Who's your favorite Peter and who's your favorite Spider? I would say favorite Peter is probably Tom Holland. Favorite Spider-Man, still Andrew Garfield. I, I like how, how quick-witted he was. I like to suit. I just like Andrew Garfield. <laughs> To be, I love penises. <laughs> I love penises. I love penises. I love penises. I love penises. Uh huh. Shane's got rape porn on his. <laughs> Stalker porn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>